Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. This episode of Sports Spectrum's podcast with Tony Graffinino is brought to you by the International Justice Mission. We love having them as partners with us here at Sports Spectrum. They want to help end slavery in this lifetime. And we want to be a part of that, and hopefully you want to be a part of that as well. It's a real thing that's still happening across the world. An international justice mission is doing great work to help protect more than 150 million people from violence worldwide. For more information about what they're doing at IJM, check out their website, IJM.org. IJM.org, and then it's slash TF. And you can become a freedom fighter and help fight to end slavery in this lifetime ijm.org slash tf and let's work together to end slavery today on the podcast we welcome tony graffinino former major league baseball player two sports spectrum selected in the 10th round of the 1990 mlb amateur draft by the atlanta braves he made his major league baseball debut six years later april 19th 1996 with atlanta He would play 13 Major League Baseball seasons with the Braves, with Tampa, with the White Sox, Kansas City, Boston, Milwaukee, and Cleveland. His son, AJ, was selected in the eighth round of the 2018 MLB draft, and currently Tony is now working in baseball ministry with UPI, Unlimited Potential Incorporated. He's also the spring training chaplain for the Chicago White Sox, as well as the chaplain for the Arizona League affiliate. And he leads a variety of small groups for players and their wives in the Phoenix area throughout the year and has helped serve missionaries in over eight different countries around the world. Tony's a great dude. Him and I connected at a conference recently, a baseball conference, and just listening to his story and his passion for Jesus and how the Lord really got a hold of him in his life. I wanted to have him on the show, and we're happy to bring it to you today. Tony Graffinino is our guest. Take a listen to Tony right here on Sports Spectrum. Tony Graffinino, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's good to talk to you, man. I'm glad to glad to be able to do this in person, which is always my favorite type of interview. And we're at this conference here in Florida, and you're in baseball ministry now. Um, but I really want to start kind of maybe from the from the early days of Tony Graffinino before we get to how you end up in ministry. Um, baseball, I, I have to imagine, big part of your life growing up. Yeah. Um... You know, I, I, my father uh, was a, he got injured in high school, loved the game of baseball. Um, I believe he probably would have played professionally if he didn't get hurt his arm. Uh, so he had a love for the game, introduced it to me uh, super early. And it was one of the things that we had, him and I, you know, was, was playing baseball or other sports, but baseball in particular. And I just grew to love it. I just had a passion to play and thankfully was good and and just you know baseball was there where was that for me who were your heroes as a kid I would yeah I I said this to Daryl Strawberry I grew up as a Yankee fan uh but my most of my years there they weren't the championship winning New York Yankees uh it was a lot of my it was the Mets yeah it was it was the Don Mattingly era unfortunately for him um yeah I jumped on the Met bandwagon in 86 no doubt um but I loved uh, player. I was a, I was a, a, a Willie Randolph and Don Mattingly were probably two of my guys that yeah. I just loved. That's awesome. And did you get a chance to ever meet them or, or kind no. of spend time with them? Never? No. Wow. Well, Willie, I, I, I did interact with Willie a little bit, but never Don Mattingly, never crossed paths. Um, mm. Yeah. Do you think you'd be fanboy, a little fanboyish with him, though? I might back? be, because I actually didn't realize I was a little bit with Strawberry. Um, there you go. You know, getting to meet him here, I had to go tell him that I used to self-hit wiffle balls across the street and make <laughs> believe I was him or Dave Winfield or Willie Randolph or yeah. uh, Wally Backman or whoever. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of neat, I guess, to, to run into uh, your childhood uh, idols, especially in this setting. Awesome to hear Daryl Strawberry's testimony. Yeah, and the setting that we're at is a a conference, a Christian conference for baseball players. So that leads to my question about faith with you. Growing up, where was faith? Hmm. I know you have a a great testimony that you're going to share, but maybe as a kid, what does church, Jesus, any of that look like to you? Yeah, I grew up in New York, uh, Northeast, Catholic, Italian family. My uh, grandmother... 
probably the, uh, you know, my mom's mom was the kind of the bedrock when it came to our faith. Um, she was strong, uh, loved to go to church, and I, you know, believe loved Jesus. Um, we kind of inherited that. Uh, I think a lot of our going to church was to honor her and to just, I don't know, from my mom's perspective, maybe to make her happy. My dad didn't go to church. Yeah. Um, he was a, against it, actually, pointed out different things that he disagreed with and whatnot. But me and my mom and my sister would go on a semi-regular basis, um, sometimes kicking and screaming, sometimes fine, let's just do it. Um, but I can't say it was a, a passionate pursuit of mine. I can't say I, you know, knew, really knew, um, you know, the gospel of the things in the church. I mean, I'm thankful for growing up Catholic because I had a foundation. I know who God is. I knew who Jesus was. I heard about his life, his death, his resurrection. I, I, I heard about those things, but I can't say that they were personal in my life until, until later on. Same here. Uh, it's funny when we were talking yesterday, growing mm -hmm. up in upstate New York, Italian family, very, very Catholic. And mm -hmm. for us, though, it was more of Easter, Christmas, mm -hmm. um, occasionally here and there, you might go make your you know, first communion and make your confirmation and kind of mm -hmm. do the things that good Catholic kids should do. Mm -hmm. But there was no foundation in the sense for me of who Jesus was. So I went to church and I had that. Uh, my grandfather, I still, and I love my grandfather, I miss him so much today. He was faithful. He was the guy who, mm. who loved Jesus, but still, uh, and, and, he would, and he would live that out. For you, as you start to get older, when does Christ become real to you? Because that was what happened to me. He became real to me. I thought at first it was some kind of cult or th something right. going on with Christians and mm -hmm. didn't understand it. But there comes a time in every person's walk with, with Christ where it becomes real to you. So tell us that story. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my perception of Christians, uh, again, growing up in the Northeast, would have been their uh, crazy wackos, Bible nuts. Bible thumpers, um, sure. Until, you know, I get into pro ball, signed out of high school, and I'm now starting to interact with more coaches, say, than players, um, who I are finding out are Christians, and yet they're not Bible-thumping whack jobs, yeah. you know? And, and actually, some of them are investing in my life, you know, into my career, uh, really trying to help me learn new things and get better at what I do. Uh, and along the way are inviting me to a Bible study or a chapel or, or something like that. And again, one guy always, I, I'll probably say his name every single time I share my story, uh, is a guy by the name of Glenn Hubbard. Mm -hmm. Long big league career. I knew who he was. Uh, I shifted from being a full-time shortstop to a second baseman my third year um, playing professionally. And he literally became my personal coach in instructional league and then the next year in spring training he was my coach for that season um i had him two other times in in triple a uh actually my first year playing uh i'm in instructional league i have to get my appendix out he takes me to the hospital he yeah. is there you know kind of caring for me and and i'm like wow you know i know who he is i i, I know of his career and yet I, he, he cares about me. He's trying to help me. He's doing all these things for me. I, I know it's, it was just a collision of, of wrong thoughts, really, or wrong ideas, wrong beliefs. Yeah. And he showed me, you know, that Christians are normal people. They're loving, caring, good. Um, they just really are passionate about Jesus, you know. And, and so I, he would invite me to Bible studies, chapels. I would go because he invited me. Unfortunately, I would go out afterwards, you know, with my teammates and friends and, and was living kind of, I wouldn't say a double life. I was never professing to be a follower of, of Jesus uh, in the minor leagues at those times. Yeah. But I would go to, to kind of honor that man or, or I'd go because he asked me to. And, and I'm thankful for it because over time, the things that I heard kind of started to sink in um, to where finally I get to a point where I'm at a kind of a crossroads of life and spirit even spiritual life, and, and he's one of the men I turn to. We'll get back to our conversation with Tony Graffinino in just a second, but I want to take a moment to share with you guys a bit about International Justice Mission. They are an, organiza an organization that I care a lot about, and what many people don't know is that violence is a threat to so many people around the world who are poor. It's as much a daily part of life as hunger, disease, or homelessness, and it's often overlooked but not by IJM, the International Justice Mission. They believe, and actually we believe this too, that every person deserves to be safe and free from violence. 
and by partnering with local authorities to rescue victims of violence, bring criminals to justice, restore survivors, and strengthen justice systems, IJM is helping to protect more than 150 million people from violence worldwide. But they can't do this without our help. And that's why I'm reaching out to you to consider joining them in becoming a Freedom Partner. Freedom Partners are some of IJM's most loyal partners in the work of justice. And their support of $24 or more each month helps survivors of slavery and violence from the moment they are rescued until they are fully restored. It may not seem like a lot to give, but it is life-changing. And I'd encourage you to join me in being a Freedom Partner today. It really does make a huge difference in the world. Go to the website ijm.org slash tf, ijm.org slash tf to become a freedom partner with IJM today. Now back to our conversation with Tony Graffinino, longtime Major League Baseball player right here on Sports Spectrum. Yeah, it's, it's funny because relationships are where it's at. You're in ministry now, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm not going to fast forward too much because I do think there's a lot more of the story to tell mm-hmm. for you. But you can see that now, how important relationships are. Obviously, a relationship with Jesus, which just sounded foreign to me when I yeah. first heard it. What does a relationship with Jesus mm-hmm. mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I go to church and there's believe in God, but relationship? But then you see how Jesus lived, and then you see the importance of relationships in your own life, right, Tony? Mm-hmm. And that happened for you with Glenn. Can you talk about a little bit more about the relationship aspect really being something that made sense to you? Yeah, I mean, he's a guy, there's another guy named Tom Roy. I mean, there's, you know, you hear people talk, I think David Platt talked about this, all these like, and then coincidentally, and then coincidentally, you right. know, and you just look back and you see these different people that have been in your life, and you're like, well, that was no coincidence, yeah. you know. Um, but it took for me men or even teammates, peers, whatever, but being intentional with me and engaging in, a, in another level of relationship outside of just professional. You know, we were, we were more than teammates, and Glenn was more than my coach. He was a man uh, who I respected, but, but by his actions and his words, he, I knew he cared about me. And I knew he wanted the best for me. And I knew he was trying to bring me to a place where I wasn't. Um, that was what he believed was for my, my better, my good. Um, and, it, and, and you know, again, when we look at, I look at the life of Jesus, I'm like, he was all about relationships, you know, with his disciples or even other people. You know, he invested himself, his time into other people so that they could know, truly know who he was. I mean, again, I, yeah. growing up, I did not know who Jesus really was. Again, I knew about his name and the thing that, that he had done, especially his death for me, but I didn't know him as a, as a person, as, a, as God in the flesh. I didn't know him until I started to read about him, you know, and, and learn about him and then talk about him with Glenn or the chaplain or a teammate. And then I began to realize, like, wow, this is, again, for me, it was amazing to realize that it wasn't just this whatever death by Jesus, it was a personal for me on the cross to cover my wretched, depraved, sinful life. Um, he, that was a, he literally did that for me. Yeah. You know, if I'm the only man alive, he comes and dies for me. If I'm the only man alive, he has to come and die because I need that so desperately, but he did that for me. And I can actually know who he is. You know, I can, I can read about him. I can have conversation with him. I can even model my life um, to be like his. And so the people that God put in my life were, were game changers, absolute game changers. Was there a moment, though, where it clicked and you can remember it? Yeah, so I guess a little bit more of my, my story, you know, I, I sign out of high school, I'm advancing through the minor leagues, basically one level a year, some injuries here and there, but still moving, um, doing the chapel thing, trying to earn God's favor so I play better and move up, and, and that game, um, but again, specific people in my life that are pouring in and trying to influence me, and, and I end up getting to the big leagues, um, just for a call up, a couple of weeks, and it, I'll, uh, it, it was amazing. It's a, the realization of a dream, you yeah. know, and, and that was just, Atlanta, right? Yeah, yeah. Just in awe of like, wow, like I'm here. I did it. Like, I know I'm not at the finish line, but like I I'm I'm here, you know, and, and yeah. it was absolutely incredible. But it only lasted a, a couple of weeks and sent down. And then there's this strong, strong desire, like I got to get back there, you know, and I don't know if it was three or so weeks later, but I, I do get back and. I, don't, I can't explain how or why, but it, the feeling was so different. 
Um, I wasn't amazed. I wasn't in awe. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I did it because that had already happened. Yeah. Now I'm there and it's like, okay, so now what? You know, what if this isn't just completely soul satisfying, if, you know, if everything isn't just, you know, roses and whatever, then what really is going to fulfill me and satisfy my life? I mean, I could strive and push and press and become an all star and win a World Series and all those other things, but. I think God opened my eyes to be able to see the emptiness in even those things, you know, and then my eyes are open to what's going on in the lives of teammates, you know, and, you know, again, professional sports is a, is a, is a rough environment and there's issues that are not uncommon to any other, you know, people group, but there's alcohol and there's drugs and there's infidelity and there's all these other things. I'm being confronted with my own sinfulness and, and so many things are crashing together. And yet at the same time, there's this God given desire to, to read his word. Again, growing up, it wasn't, I wasn't told to read the Bible. It wasn't something that was encouraged. I, I didn't even think about it. Um, and so all of a sudden, it's like, man, I, I want to start reading his Bible, and I want to start reading this word, and I want to start to get to know this better. And, and then again, Glenn Hubbard, I get sent back down to AAA, and there's Glenn. You hmm. know? And so, hey, Glenn, can you help me? You know, I want to start reading this, this Bible I have, and, and he's fired up. And we start reading in Matthew, and we're talking about it every day, and then... June 23rd, 1996, there's a chapel in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, Don Bergen is his name, and he says, I, I have messages planned weeks ahead of time. This week, I felt God saying, change it up, hmm. and I feel led to speak on the parable of the soils, and I had just read it the night before. Mm -hmm. And so coincidentally, right, um, yeah. I'm thinking coincidentally, wow, that's crazy. Glenn and I haven't even talked about this, and he breaks it down, and I start to realize, like, I don't know the Lord. I don't know him. And he gives the opportunity to know him and to become a follower. And I pray. And at the time, I had no idea what that even meant. Uh, even my wife was like, what does that mean? When I came home from the road trip and told her, and she's like, are you a born-again Christian? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, she's like, well, that doesn't mean you're going to be talking to people about Jesus and stuff. Are I said, no chance. <laughs> um, and I laugh too, because that's what I do for a living now. Right. You know, I get up in front of people or I meet with people one-on-one -on -one and I talk to them about Jesus, yeah. you know? Crazy. So, uh, yeah, it's amazing the way he works. And, and, uh, you know, sometimes I look back at my life and the things that I did, the choices I made, and I'm like, gosh, man, I wish I would have known better. I wish I would have done different. I wish I would have, but I also look at it and I go, you know what? Those are the very things that led me to the foot of the cross that brought me to this yeah. place of surrender where I turned my life over to Jesus. Well, they don't define, I like to say they don't define you, they refine you, right? Yeah. And those moments that you went through had to refine you into the person you are today. You mentioned your wife, mm. uh, Tony Graffinino is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. You and I were talking at breakfast yesterday about our wives. Both of us came to Christ and our wives were not Christians when that happened. And I remember my wife specifically saying to me, well, why are you coming to, to Christ? You don't need that. Mm -hmm. Our lives aren't in in this crazy, awful place? Like, why are you coming to Christ? And it took her three, four years to really um, see it become real in my life and then other people put into her life to then come to, to know the Lord about four or five years after I did. Mm. Similar situation for you, right? Yeah, it was uh, three years for, for my wife. And, yeah. you know, I praise God every day because he gave me, uh, he gave me grace and he took away, at least in this area, a competitive spirit. Um, when my wife would ask questions or we would go to church and, you know, hear the message or whatever it would be, it wasn't me trying to prove my new faith right. It was just a dialogue that we were having. You know, what did you think about, you know, um, you know, the priest's message today? Or what did you think about this? Or, you know, whatever it was, and we would just communicate over it. You know, well, what's the deal with infant baptism? And how come this? And so we were just having this really healthy dialogue, I think. But it still took her three years. I mean, she had some of the baggage to work through as well, you know, and, and, um, but again, I, I think she saw a change in me. Uh, she was now being introduced to the wives of my new friends and teammates and guys that their wives loved Jesus and they were, um, caring for her and we got pregnant early, uh, and, and they threw a baby shower, you mm -hmm. know, and just different things that some of these wives were doing for her. And she's just like, wow, like, Again, growing up, you think these born again Christians are crazy, and yet these wives are awesome, and I feel like they care about me, and they're doing all these nice things for me, and they're treating me a certain way, and, and that had an impact, but it was her own process. I mean, it took her time to fully understand who Jesus was and what he had done specifically for her, and that she needed to repent and turn to him and, and uh, you know, choose to become a follower of his, and, and that finally happened, yeah, in 1999, and it, it's, it was awesome. 
You played 13 years in the majors. How mm-hmm. hard was it, or was it not hard at all, to, to be a Christian and be a major league baseball player? Not a professional baseball player, a major league baseball player. Yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, first off, it's hard to be a Christian um, in the world we live in anyway. Um, right, no matter what you do. Well, no matter what you do. I mean, the yeah. world and it, the, just the, 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 the things that are important in this world um, come against the things that are important to you as a follower of Christ. Um, yes. So that in and of itself is difficult. And then there's this, uh, I don't know if I want to call it a stigma, but there's this, and, and my, I used to take offense at this, that Christian athletes or ballplayers were soft. Mm. I, I hated that. Uh, I was so determined to prove that wrong, yeah. um, to play with such conviction and determination and to do it for the glory of God, but to do it the right way, but to just to just be a hard-nosed grinder type of player um, that guys wanted as their teammate. You know, it had nothing to do with believer, non-believer, or whatever. Um, but... Again, you know, I, I I didn't share this yet, but I grew up in in with this belief uh, as a man that you you need to be strong and not weak. Um, you need to be good at sports or basically dominate whatever it is that you set out to do. Yeah. And then the other part of it is is men, real men, they sleep with women. They yeah. get women, and that is so. That's so prevalent in sports yeah. i mean it is unfortunately yeah. it is so real and and uh and so then you become a believer and you're not doing all those things and you're the minority on the team that's not doing not to say that every guy does those things but of course but you are in a in a small category and it's can be lonely i've been on teams where i was the only only believer mm. it was a struggle to get another guy to go to chapel with me but i've also been on teams where there was five other guys mm. and we would hang out together and and ha- you know go to dinner and movies and and you know do whatever together so um it it, it can be tough uh but it also depending on the situation you're in it it can be not as tough yeah i'll say that how was your transition out of the game it's always difficult for a lot of guys they always say the game retires you you don't retire from the game mm-hmm. uh, i hear that a lot in football you even hear, hear it a lot with baseball how was that transition out of the game for you yeah i thought i was ready um i thought i was rooted in christ like i know who i am my identity is strong yeah uh and then you realize i did um, maybe a month into the off season when I should have started to train and wasn't like, man, well, what, what am I going to do with myself? You know? And, and then you start to realize like, even though I've always said to people, baseball is what I do. It's not who I am. It absolutely was who I was. I was a baseball player yeah. since, since I was in diapers, yeah. I was a baseball player. Um, it is a, 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 a portion of my identity and, I was confused, and I went through a little mini, I don't know, maybe it lasted less than a month, but a little depression. Like, I, I really was, I didn't know where, which direction I was going to go in. And, um, you know, thankfully, uh, the, the ministry that I work for, Unlimited Potential Incorporated, um, I had uh, exposure to this ministry. Uh, some of the guys on staff were chaplains that I had, one in Atlanta, one in Chicago. I was friends with another one that was in Arizona. And um, I just started to attach myself to them, and, and I did a trip with them and went to a retreat, and I started to realize, like, wait a second, you know, and I think God loudly spoke um, to me in this area where he said, you know, like, they were looking to hire on some new people, and I, heard, I really felt like I heard him say, or at least in my head anyway, um, they're yeah. looking for someone like you. Like, and I, you know, again, as, as I started to do more things with them, I was like, this is the, probably the best of of what I can look for because I'm still in the game. I have an opportunity to mentor, disciple, care for players, especially young guys. And that was something I was doing towards the end of my career uh, anyway. And yet I get to also travel. I get to, to preach the gospel. I get to do all these things. And um, so I, I think it was a little over a year from when I stopped playing, or actually two years, because I stopped playing in 09. Um, and then I didn't come on staff until July, July of uh, 2011. Um, but that transition was tough. Tony Graffinino, thank you for being here on the show. Last question. Um, we asked this to all of our guests here on Sports Spectrum as the final question. For you, what are you learning from God today? What's Oof. he teaching you right now in the season of life that he has you in? What are you learning from the Lord? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and I feel like it's a question I need to ask myself more often. You yeah. know, you come to a conference like this and you, it's like the megaphone 
if you can't hear what God is saying in a place like this, um, you got to clean out your ears, right? Yeah. And I feel like the message has been pushed and, and, and really told to us well. We are who we are. We are where we are for a reason, for a purpose. Um, God wants to uniquely use each person, myself included, um, to grow and expand his kingdom and for his glory. Um, the need is urgent. Um, the time is short. And people need to know who Jesus is. Again, it's the, it's the great news. And, and we have this, we've been given this treasure, this gift of understanding and knowing what the gospel is. And it's not a gift or a treasure that we're supposed to hold on to and, and keep to ourselves. It's one that God has says, I give this to you so that you can give it to others. Um, and so that's what, you know, again, I, I get paid to do these things, and yet I'm still feeling convicted that I, I need to do more. You know, uh, yeah. as in ministry, and you may agree with this, but you have a tendency to punch a, a, a time clock. Oh, you yeah. Go well, out. Jesus can become, we think that our work is our relationship with God, mm-hmm. and we are pouring in and pouring in and doing all these things, and yet we can completely forget the whole yep. connection with yep. the Lord, right? Yeah. So you punch a clock, and then you're off duty, kind yeah. of, and you're like, well, wait a second. You know, even for me, I, I go ministry, and then I come home. It's like, well, well my family should be my first and foremost. They're the priority in my ministry. And then I'm surrounded by neighbors. You know, they should be a, a priority focus. And then, yes, I have these places that I go to, but I'm being convicted that you're never off duty. Yeah. You know, you don't punch the clock when you're living a life for the Lord. You're you always on mission. You're always on mission. And so what does that look like in the different arenas that, that you're in? And so that's what I'm hearing. That's a good lesson. Tony Graffanino, 13 years in the major leagues and now doing great work with Unlimited Potential Incorporated, UPI, ministering uh, the gospel to others. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate you being on the show. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great stuff there from Tony Graffanino, 13-year Major League Baseball veteran, joining us here on Sports Spectrum, sharing his story of sports and faith in Jesus. And certainly for many years, playing the game of baseball professionally, now serving the baseball community in ministry with UPI, Unlimited Potential Incorporated. And you can read about UPI if you just Google them. They have a great ministry and they serve in a wonderful way the world of baseball by ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. So many thanks to Tony for joining us here at Sports Spectrum and many thanks to you for listening. We really do appreciate you checking us out. There's a bunch of ways that you can stay in contact with us. The first is to simply go to our social media pages, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can like us and follow us and see all the great things that are happening from our sports spectrum content on our social media pages and and hit us up. Let us know that you heard this podcast by tweeting it out or posting it on Facebook and tagging us. And we'll make sure that we like it and comment and share and all that good stuff on social media media. And the second way is to go to our website, sportspectrum.com. That's the home base for all of our content at Sports Spectrum. Articles, daily devotionals, every single podcast, all there at sportspectrum.com. And lastly, just want to encourage you to subscribe to our magazine. It's $18 for an entire year subscription. Super cheap. You can go to sportspectrum.com to subscribe or give us a call toll free 866-821-821. 71 866-821-2971 and subscribe to Sports Spectrum's magazine today. Thanks so much for listening to this episode with Tony Graffinino. Thanks to our sponsors and partners, IJM, helping to end slavery in this lifetime. Check out IJM.org for all the great work that they're doing. And we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day.